marhaban. That is Arabic for hello. So I say that because uh, in the early 2000s, a bunch of Lebanese and Italian engineers got together and they founded a company called W Motors. It's established in the UAE, the United Arab Emirates. And so this is their first supercar. It's the first uh, sports car designed and produced in the Middle East. It's called the Lycan Hypersport. Uh, you might recognize it. I think it was in one of the Fast and Furious movies. Maybe this is the car that jumped buildings in one of those movies. Uh, by the way, I learned about this car a long time ago on Twice uh, Diecast channel. You know, David from that channel. You want to check out his channel. He's got a lot of cool videos there. And so I put this on my shopping list and I eventually got around to buying it. And here we are today. So, let's take a look here and try to compare it to these photos, see how realistic it is. The brand is called Small Car Art. It might be listed as SCA. This might be one of the earlier models, I'm thinking. Let's see. I also have like a Rolls-Royce Phantom, I think, from these guys. So, this thing was priced at $3.4 million. And uh, research tells me only seven of them were made. And I think maybe one of them might have gone to the... UAE police or something so maybe only six are available to the public I might be mistaken though uh, what well, 0 to 16 less than three seconds so that's faster than most motorcycles uh, so that's pretty fast of course and yeah because uh, seven units worldwide I just don't know if one went to the police okay so cool it's got a crystal case and it's got these tabs here so that's nice because you can actually pick up the crystal and the model won't just fall out which does, can happen on the other boxed uh, models I've seen in this hobby. But one downfall is there seems to be a lip as well that makes it super hard to... Boy, I'm afraid this thing's gonna crack or fly off. <laughs> just... Alright, so yeah, there's a tooth here on this crystal part. You can see you have to push it in inwards I guess to clear the the plastic there and then quite interesting look how curved it is so that's weird I'm not sure if that's by design I guess it is by design because the base of it is curved as well so that's interesting I've never seen a case like that where the sides are curved like that all right so that's not not so important this model wasn't super expensive you can just search online you know for it and uh decide for yourself but that screw was pretty tough just to let you know so make sure you use a screwdriver with a long handle or you'll so you can get some good uh, purchase on it all right so here's a little index piece here to keep the model from spinning around the base it's kind of a weak I don't know something about this plastic doesn't look high class to me and also what is this it looks like the plastic broke off there Oh well. No, I guess it's alright. So, let's take a look at these photos here. Brian Zook here put this photo up of the red car here. Hmm. Looks pretty good, right? Uh, the front vents, the front lights. Uh, Naturally, you can pause the video, but initial impressions are that's a pretty realistic looking model. Let's try the rear view. Focus on the model. Maybe twist it a little this way. It's not bad. The white in the center of the taillights is a, maybe a little bright, but... Uh, it's because it's painted white, whereas on the real car, you know, it's going to be a translucent piece of white plastic there. But, yeah, I mean, I'm okay with it. It doesn't have this wing. This this is a pop-up wing. It's in the up position, so obviously the casting has it in the down position, like it's parked. Okay, well, looks pretty good to me so far, but let's get the, uh, the toothpick of... Uh, Destiny out and uh, see how it looks here. Oh boy, what's up with the scratches on the door? So that's not cool. What the? <laughs> I, uh, I kind of want to swear there. I mean, that's that's horrible. It's like it's like Wolverine had a field day on this thing. I, what the heck is going on, man? I mean, <laughs> so those are horrible. 
How could someone on it? Maybe there's no inspection line. You know, I'm sure this thing is made in China. It does say made in China right there. So those those people don't care. I mean, they're working at a factory. They're just like, ah, whoever buys this is gonna get some scratches. But yeah, that's pretty bad. There's no QC apparently from this company. And if I recall, I think maybe one of the Rolls Royce Phantoms I have also. Ah, uh, that but that one's from Time Micro, so I apologize. But okay, well, that's not good. That's not not impressive at all. What is nice though is this W Motors logo here. It looks like it's a piece of metal. It's uh, some sort of metal photo etch piece. Let's see if I can focus on it though. It might be there. We right look at that so that's pretty cool I mean it's not a decal it's it's a physical piece of metal or something so that's pretty neat okay uh, okay let's look at the rear wheel to focus there yeah it's nice it has a brake system we got a yellow caliper in there I'm gonna guess this doesn't spin alright it does spin but it definitely doesn't spin nicely this is not a model meant to be played with it's not going to roll down a Hot Wheels track or anything like that. It's too much resistance going on. But it is nice that the rotors don't spin with the wheels. They're held in place. Alright, so that's pretty realistic. Hmm. But I am noticing this wheel gap is just wrong. You know, it's much bigger here in the front. And not, not, and very tight in the back, the air gap. So it's almost like this axle wants to be pushed forward. So that's, that's too bad. Alright. You notice on the side here there's actually a texture in the vent, so that's a nice touch. It's nice to see. It's molded into the casting, I think. Or is it a separate piece of plastic? Actually, it might be a separate piece of plastic. I almost feel like that's glue residue right there. Mm, I don't know. I don't want to pick at it. It might remove that graphic. This graphic here of this carbon fiber is tampo printed it seems it's not it's not a decal so that's good it shouldn't flake off or anything in the future the mirrors are nice pretty cool detail going on let's see here oh and really cool even though it's a silver car this actually has a silver insert into the mirror I mean it's reflective like a reflective sticker so that's pretty cool all right so going to the front yeah, some black uh, texture in the grills. Pretty cool. I feel like this is a whole separate black piece of plastic inserted into the casting. It looks like it's a little gap there underneath. But that's fine. And then a little white paint here for these like turn signals. And then the lights, yeah, they're plastic inserts and they got a little molded, some molded circles. One thing I want to mention about why this car might be some people might say it's worth 3.4 million dollars is because this is the first car with headlights with embedded jewels in it uh, the LED lights are titanium LED blades and then there's supposed to be 440 diamonds or 15 carats of diamonds in these headlights somewhere so that's kind of crazy I guess if you go into an accident people are going to come flocking to the vehicle because they're going to try to find the diamonds scattered all over the road <laughs> right, so it's kind of weird. But hey, if you can afford a $3.4 million car, you can afford to lose 15 carats of diamonds. You'd probably laugh at that. You'd probably think it's like they're just random rocks. Anyways, so there's a black line coming up here. It's supposed to be a vent, and it's not well done on this side. This side is much better. You know, this tiny black line is supposed to be a vent going into the wheel, I assume. Or maybe it's not a vent. I'm looking back at that photo of the real car. It might just be a styling line. Maybe it's just carbon fiber. But it's definitely nicer on this side. Whereas here, it missed the mark. You know, it's it's way over here. It's, it wasn't applied well. So the hood emblem again, it seems probably a piece of metal. And it's poorly applied. Yeah, I can feel it. It's raised. But naturally, it should probably be over to the right more so not the best quality here and then why is this vent messed up like it's a line then there's a little extra line here but that extra line is not on this side <coughs> excuse me dry throat 
you get a dry throat when you talk this long. And then the paint quality here is something to be desired. Like all these little splotches. So it's not good. It's pretty bad actually. I mean a, a Kyosha would have better paint than this. Okay. What is nice though is this wiper blade is three dimensional. You know, I think it might be a piece of molded plastic because these two little things here are probably what is part of the molding sprue and it was clipped off the sprue right there at those two places. So, yeah, it's nice to see. You know, it's three dimensional. If it was clipped off properly, it'd probably be one of the nicest wiper blades I've seen in this hobby. Now the window, it's got the, you know, the black molding around it. So that looks pretty good. All right. Looking at this side of the car. Again, the, the wheel gap on the front is weird. It, uh, it's, the wheel is too far back. The, the rear wheel is fine. You know, that looks relatively centered. Although, okay, look at this. The axle isn't straight as the wheel spins in a, it's not concentric. So maybe I just gotta spin this wheel. Oh, look at that. Easy solution. <laughs> so. All right, so I guess, uh, yeah, just, I should have thought of that earlier. Sorry. But yeah, you got a bent axle. You just got to twist it until it looks nice. There. Okay, that looks good. Simple. All right, nothing to complain about. All right, so I'm looking at the real car photo here. This should probably be painted black because I think it's a, a relief, pressure relief valve for the front wheel well. But there is no black paint there. I guess you could just take one of those ultra fine sharpies and fill it in with black if it really bothers you. I'm looking at this side vent again here. It's hard to say. I'm not sure if that's part of this casting or not. Okay. Let's go to the back here. So this is nice, you know, it's got some printing there. I don't know what it says though. Uh, Lichen maybe? Right. Yeah, I would have to guess that's some sort of script that maybe is supposed to say lichen. Right, L-Y-K, yeah, I would have to assume that's what it's supposed to say. So there you got a W Motors logo there in the center. Under this high magnification looks pretty bad, but uh, it might just be the reflection. I think it's crazy glue. It's like that metal piece has glue there. From this angle, it doesn't look so bad, right? So that clearness is just picking up a lot of reflection. And then you do have the license plate printed on, which is nice. You got a printed on rear center light, although it's not printed 100% accurately. It's a little bit crooked, right? And then the tail lights, yeah, they're they're painted, which is which is I guess okay because they're so thin. Mm, I suppose they could have put in plastic red pieces, but. And I'm not sure if they would have gotten the white line e easily uh, there as well. It's interesting that the taillights have a little dot matrix to them, a little dottedness. Maybe because it's supposed to be a bunch of LEDs. But the rear grill has texture, as you can see, and the, the texture looks pretty tight and nice. There's uh, some. I'm a. Oh, I think these are the exhaust tips. Yeah, when I look at the car photo behind, I think these are like, they might be titanium rectangular exhaust tips. But here it's just a silver graphic. Silver and some black. Okay. And then these things up here look like they might be air vents on the real car as well. Or a carbon graphic, but they're black on the real model. Uh, I mean the real photo. So again, maybe some black Sharpie would be helpful there if you really want it to be accurate. Look at this engine cover. So it's got a texture to it it's to simulate, I assume, carbon fiber. It's pretty good, actually. I think it looks good. I'm assuming this is the third brake light, maybe? No, maybe it's not. The third brake light is supposed to be here, horizontal. And then there is a rectangle I see on the photo of the real car up there. Hmm, okay. Uh, the, that's the strangest sunroof I've ever seen, but it's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool actually, looking at the styling of this vehicle. You can see a teardrop coming here. 
right? The, you have these lines here from the front, the hood contour here, and then it curves into this line going here, and it tapers off there. So pretty cool styling. I didn't really look up who styled this car, but it's it's interesting. It's a relatively unique looking vehicle. Okay, so the interior now. This is going to be hard to show because the, the side windows are so shallow and they're molded plastic so there's a distortion going on but I'm going to try to zoom in here and slowly spin. You can see there's some white seats uh, but there the camera lost focus. There's a steering wheel here on the near side. Okay so I'm going to pull out the flashlight let's see if we can uh, help. All right, so this, that's a pretty interesting steering wheel. It looks like there's stripes on it. Yeah, that steering wheel has a texture. It's I think it's a decal. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, that's a lot of effort for a steering wheel. I'm trying to get a shot of like the dashboard, like if there are any gauges there. But the window is so shallow, I can't tell. I have no idea, sorry. Hmm. Let me try from this side, the passenger side. Here's another shot of the steering wheel. There's a center console, it's just all white though. It doesn't look really good. Uh, the seats do look good though, but no seat belts or anything. But it looks like there's a little color right there on the shoulder rest. Maybe that's where, where the seat belt's supposed to come through. Hmm. All right. Well, anyways, interesting. That's a pretty cool steering wheel. If you get excited about steering wheels. Okay. So, yeah, from this from this distance, the paint doesn't look so bad, I guess, except for the Wolverine scratches in the door. So, it's, um, I'm just trying to come up with like a, a summary. You know, is this a good model or not? Let me put it up on the Spin Master again here and. Uh, you guys can kind of compare or pause the video as you need to. So, <laughs> I think it's a good model if you can get it for a decent price. I honestly don't remember what I paid for this. It wasn't much. I think it was under $15, if I recall. Um, small car, car Lovers Diecast, I think it was called, the website. CLD. I think that's the website I got this model from. I apologize. I order from so many different places online, I kind of lose track. So if you can get it for under 15 bucks, I think it's a decent model. But if you get this thing for 20 or over 20, I don't know. I think like there's definitely some quality control problems, like that black stripe on the front next to the right headlight, and then the scratches in the door, and then like the side vents there, you know. Those should be black. And I think there they could have put black in for sure. It's not like those are super thin. So, yeah, if you love this car though, it is an interesting piece of history, you know, being the first uh, car, sports car from the Middle East. And actually, let me get back to some stats on this thing. It has a uh, gold stitching on the seats. So like gold thread for the seats. Uh, there's a 3.7 liter twin turbocharged flat six. And it's made by Roof roof of uh, Porsche fame and uh, that thing is making 780 horsepower and this car is supposed to get up to 245 miles per hour but I don't know if anyone's actually done that in, in the real world I'm not sure if it's tested to be because I, I, I'm a little skeptical that this thing can go 240 miles per hour with only 780 horsepower if a Bugatti's cranking out over a thousand horsepower and it can't, it's all aerodynamics, of course, but uh, neither of these cars look very aerodynamic to me. You know, aerodynamic cars have almost no protrusions. They have very little uh, vents. Uh, you gotta think of like the streamliners from the 1930s, 1940s. They just look like blobs of metal, you know? They look like land speed record cars. But these things simply just have a lot of uh, styling going on, but it doesn't particularly make them aerodynamic. 
So the one of the reasons why the Bugatti, I think, needs to have a, a thousand horsepower is because it's not particularly aerodynamic. So it needs that extra horsepower to push it through the air. And so I'm kind of thinking the Lycan is the same thing. It's uh, It's got so much styling going on, I kind of feel it. There's no way it could go 245, but that's just my speculation. I'm not an aerodynamics expert, right? I'm not an engineer, but uh, if no one's actually tested it, it's not true, right? Okay, so, uh, you know, I did a video on this uh, Bugatti Devo. You can just search my uh, channel for Devo and it should come up. I just want to give a size comparison because somewhere in the Middle East, someone has a garage that looks like this. Okay, so the Lycan, you can see how thin it is in the middle. It tapers and then it flares out again. It's quite interesting, the, the styling of this thing. I'm growing to appreciate it. At first I didn't think this was a good looking car, but I actually kind of like it now, now they have the model, right? So, here's another car. We got a Lamborghini. Yeah, I'm a moron. <laughs> taken off the all right anyways so the Lambo is a pretty long car it's uh, much longer it seems I try to back these up to the same spot but uh, it's interesting the Lambo also has like this teardrop styling in the rear where the cabin tapers off in the middle and then the wheel arches are flaring out so interesting okay all right then. Well, it's been 21 minutes, so I apologize. But uh, when it gets to, I really like hypercars, so I like talking about them. I really like looking at the styling of them. So if you want to have a, a relatively decent model of the first uh, sports car from the UAE, you might want to pick this one up. Okay, thanks for rolling through, guys.